Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Zone of Anatomy. Today we are going to discuss about the term development up to second week, that is a part of our embryology. Since third week is very broad, so we are going to discuss third week in the another lecture. And today we are going to discuss just about development that take place in the first and the second week, that is up to 14 days of the pregnancy. So let's move forward. So we have a three phases of the development. First is pre-embryonic phase, that is up to third week. We have embryo phase up to four to eight week. And we have a fetal phase from eight to 38 week. From these three, you might get an MCQ. So just remember the time period with their names. Come moving forward in the first week, we are going to study about fertilization, cleavage and implantation. In fertilization, we see just a superficial part as we already know how the implantation occurs. So I'm not going to elaborate much on this. We see the cleavage on a broad basis. We see the implantation. So remember one thing that in the first week, there is the beginning of the implantation. And at the second week of development, there is the end of the implantation. So both first and the second week is concerned with the implantation process. So as I said, there is the process known as the fertilization, then we see cleavage and we see what the what is that implantation is all about. Coming to the uh, fertilization, I superficially explained what is the fertilization is actually. So as we know, the process of fusion of male and female gametes is known as the fertilization. Okay, so during fertilization, the sperms come in contact with the zona pellucidum layer of, which is the layer of the ovum and induces the changes in the membrane that blocks the entry of the other sperm. You can see that other sperms cannot move further in the zona pellucidum once only one sperm get entered or penetrate this zona pellucidum. Thus, once the sperm get embedded or enters, it ensures that only one sperm can fertilize the ovum and not other. And this process is known as the polyspermy. The acromion of the sperm enters into the cytoplasm of the ova through the zona pellucida and the plasma membrane. It will, you know, just penetrate zona pellucida as well as the plasma membrane. This induces the completion of the meiotic division of the secondary oocyte. We already know what is primary oocyte, we know secondary oocyte. So it is the completion of the meiotic division of the secondary oocyte. And the second meiotic division, which is an unequal, and it results in the formation of the secondary polar body. And a secondary polar body, as we already know, it is a haploid ooted. And soon the nucleus of the the sperm and the ovum get fused and it forms the zygote. So now we come to the process that is known as the zygote. So suppose the fertilized ovum, which we have one male pronuclear and the female pronuclear, both of them fuse together and then the genetic material gets arranged on the metaphasic spindle. Then the maternal and the paternal chromosomes are arranged at the metaphase plate and then it will, what? Then these chromosomes will start separating like if we have double copy of the maternal and the double copy of the paternal okay so that the chromosomes will split longitudinally at the centromere the point where the chromosome split is known as the centromere mcq point and this starts splitting and move to the opposite poles when the chromosomes start moving on the opposite pole that is known as our chromatids and no chromosomes. These chromatids start migrating towards the opposite pole as these chromatids are moving opposite poles. You can see here, uh, the cells develop. Now the cells started dwelling, developing a deep furrow or we can say a cleft or we say that uh, there is some uh, um, deep cleavage over here, okay? So uh, they started developing uh, deep as a result of which the, this furrow the splits are, we say that it basically divided, it divides a cell into two cells. Since you see this furrow get deeper and deeper and deeper, so it may we come onto this stage. In this stage, we see that uh, 
this for for row or the cleft get completed and this cell become the two cell stage so how it is easy now in the formation of the two cell stage we can see these chromosomes on both side develop the nuclear membrane and now the zygote which is form is converted into the two cell stage and it is the product of a first cleavage and so in first cleavage we have the two cell stages and it has the nuclear membrane within itself now coming to the points to remember in the first cleavage is that in the first cleavage first cleavage is the product is uh, mainly concerned with the two cell stage and it has it still present in our fallopian tube and it still has the zona pellucida in it you can see in this diagram that when we talk about the two cell stages it is still present in the fallopian tube and it has still zona pellucida with around it so these are the two most important mcq point of view question now so now the zygote is converted to the ovum after the fertilization to the two cell stage now if for example on the first day the fertilization occur so on the second day the uh, two cell stage happen and this is around 30 hours after the fertilization even on the second day only there is a four cell stage that is second day cleavage and the third division that is eight cell division so in the second day we say first cleavage we see second cleavage and we see third cleavage only okay now we have done with first week second week in first week we have the fertilization on the first week okay then this complete process goes on how this chromatid splits and everything then we this complete part is our second day now we come to the third day what processes takes place at the time of the third day so on the third division also takes place on the second day this entire thing till third division or the eighth cell stage is still present in our fallopian tube and it is not present in our uterine tract okay so you can see two cell stage four cell stage six cell stage eight cell stage is known as the eight to 16 cell stage is known as the morula and it is the early morula and it is still present in the this uh, fallopian tube now moving forward we'll see 16 cell stage now this is a 16 cell stage when it comes to the 16 cell stage it look like a mulberry so we call it is as the morula early morula stage is around the third day now we started with the study of third day okay and it is somewhat like the mulberry so we name it as the morula and it is the early morula stage in the early morula stage is on the third day and it is around the 16 cell stage after fertilization morula is still present in the fallopian tube and around third day only morula will fall into the uterine cavity on the third day that it has started going in the uterine cavity so around third to four day we say that the morula is present in the uterine cavity now we have more stages like other uh, stages like nine and eight cell stages and some cells which are aggregated and present at center and some get uh, like arranged at the outer cells okay so the cells here we see that some uh, we done with cleavage then we see some cells are present centrally and some are arranged outside so the cells which are aggregated at center is known as inner cell mass and the cells which are present outside is known as the outer cell okay so when we talk about inner cell mass just take this as an inner cell mass so inner cell mass goes in the process which is known as the compaction what is it that the cells in the inner cell mass communicate with each other very patiently or we say it will uh, communicate very passionately all the inner cell mass that is cells present at the center comes contact with each other they you know fuse with each other so tightly that they have a tight cell junction with them and the outer cell is very loosed 
Okay, so there is the maximum contact with each other and the process is therefore is known as the compaction and this takes place around, you know, the third and the fourth day and in the fourth day we has already see that there is a division known as inner cell mass and the outer cell mass. When we talk about how these cells get, to, you know, communicate with each other, okay, so they basically uh, send metabolic signals to one another and even the ions go to one another. So there is a very tight junction. In this manner, they talk, they communicate, and uh, the cells which are on the outer, outer side, what is its uh, function? It makes the placing or that coverings. Basically, it, or like uh, the outer cell do not make the placent or a baby. It makes the covering and the inner cell masses are embryo proper, okay? So the function of inner and the outer cell mass we have seen already. So the baby placenta and the covering is formed by outer cell mass and the inner cell mass goes in the process of compaction. Okay. Embryo proper is formed by inner cell mass and make it a correction. The placenta and the covering is formed by the outer cell mass. Since it is on the outer side, the baby or the placenta is the or the or any covering is by the outer cell mass. So the morula with inner cell mass and the outer cell mass go into the uterine cavity on the third day. We have already seen that this morula will float in the uterine cavity for about two days. Now it is still floating for the process of implantation on the fourth and the fifth day. Then around fourth day through the zona pellucida, the, or the zona pellucida has some fluids. Will that, that fluid will start come, going in and start developing a fluid filled cavities as you see here. And eventually these multiple fluid filled cavities, you know what happens? They make uh, the fluid basically makes many cavities over here like this, this, this. And when they, you know, fuse with each other, they form a complete cavity, okay? So like many small cavities first form and then they make a complete cavity amongst them. And when these multiple filled cavities are formed, they come together and when they come put to, together to each other, they push the inner cell mass. As you said, this is a white portion. It push the inner cell mass from the one side and all the fluid which enters and the fluid will cyst is formed. Since the cyst is formed and the cells is multiplying, inner cell mass multiplies very fast. So this product of conception or the embryo we see with the cyst. So the embryo which is having the cyst, why it is having a cyst? Because the cells the, is or, you know, proliferating at a very fast rate. So it is known as the blast. So these cells are known as blast and these cavities known as the cyst. And so we name that as a blastocyst. And in the early stage of blastocyst, it is the zona pellucida is still present. Now at this stage, blastocyst has to hatch out. So now the blastocyst is from and it has the inner cell mast, which is known as for further we class uh, term inner cell mast as the embryo blast and the outer cell mast as the trophoblast. You see these outer yellow mass, it is labeled as trophoblast, and these inner cell mass is termed as embryo blast, and the cavity is known as the blastocyst. Okay, so these blastocysts are at the fourth to fifth day after the zona pellucida start disintegrating. You see that uh, there is no pellucida, zona pellucida at this stage from fifth day, fifth to sixth day, blastocysts will hatched out from the zona pellucida. After this, once this hatched out on the sixth day, then the implantation started occur and this implantation occurs on the sixth day or the between the end of the sixth day and the beginning of the seventh day and it att attaches to the endometrium okay so this is the complete thing which we uh, study about the cleavage now we move further and we study what about the 
blastocyst is followed but before going that just see the layers of the endometrium since we say that the blastocyst is uh, going to attach to the endometrium endometrium is classified into basically three layers the functional layer is divided into two one is the compact layer and the spongy layer and the other is the basal layer okay so there are the glands and the basal or like arteries and these arteries are somewhat spiral shape. You can easily see here the arteries are spiral in shape. This glandular and the vascular structure, in it basically, you know, um, develop under the influence that is a hormone known as the progesterone to make the endometrium ready to receive the coming product of the conception. That is whatever we see, how the blastocysts get embedded, okay? So the entire thread goes to the hormone that is known as the progesterone. So progesterone helps in this very much. So we have the functional layer. The functional layer is highly vascular because it has an arteries. It is well developed, has a glandular structure. And so we call it like it is a functional layer. Basal layer is uh, when we, uh, you know, uh, when someone asks you why there is a bleeding in the menstruation because the, this layer, functional layer get disintegrated at the time of the, functional layer of endometrium get disintegrated at the time of menstruation and not the basal layer, okay? So uh, the, during menstruation, the, comp the functional layer are lost, but not the basal layer. And it is never lost because from the basal layer, next cycle will produce. For example, okay, let's see here. We have, so we have, So, I'll just think that this is our basal layer, okay. When we have the, our, uh, you know, what we say, the menstruation, then this part get disintegrated, this complete part of the functional get disintegrated and the bleeding gets started. But this part is why it is not disintegrated because then they again make these arteries then again, the formation of this spiral arteries will be done by the basal layer. So it is never going to disintegrate in the time of the menstruation. So around sixth day, okay. Now around the sixth day, after fertilization, endometrium is having a well-developed vascular system as well as the glandular structure and it has a basal layer. Now this blastocyst is all ready to attach to the cells of the endometrium. Now we see what are the molecular structures which we, or we see molecular events occurs in the blastocyst. So we say that the, there is a trophoplast which is made by outer cell mass, okay. Trophoblast made by outer cell mass and the inner cell mass which form the embryoblast and this is the blastocyst, okay. So trophoblastic cells express special molecules which are somewhat a hook-like structures which we known as the selectins. These selectins will hook with other molecules that are the ligand channels which are expressed on the surface of the antigens we can see there, okay. On the surface of the, uh, basically this endometrium, these ligands or the selectin ligands or the channels are present to welcome these selectins. Selectins are basically the adhering molecules, like it going to adhere on the um, endometrium. So these are the adhering molecules which are expressed on the trophoblast, but they got embedded or they got uh, adhere on the these uh, selectin channels. So here we have the receptors and there is another molecules we can uh, name them as integrin also and trigger molecules that helps them to, you know, completely embed it. So now blastocysts will attach with the help of sugar molecules and the selectins we see it is coming. These are selectins, these are the ligands and there is another molecules which we can the sugar and they get 
attached to it. Once the blastocyst is attached, it needs to be embedded to move in. Now, blastocyst will try to move in by inducing apoptosis. Since this blastocyst is due to embedded, so uh, the main or the main thing the blastocyst can think is that just delete these cells. If these cells get deleted, it is easy for the blastocyst to embed it. Okay, so now blastocyst will start the process known as the apoptosis apoptosis of which the endothelial cells we see these are the endothelial cells that goes under apoptosis therefore these endothelial cells started dying and melting away and blastocysts start going to the deeper blastocysts will produce some digestive enzymes okay so these digestive enzymes which is produced by the blastocysts produce certain molecular activity which will induce basically the death of these epithelial cells and from these cells what these cells are you know dying by the process of apoptosis some nutrition some secretions will come and by this time when it is embedded in the place especially at the place of the endometrium you know so there you see that uh, once it is get is embedded the part at which it is embedding the cells start in breaking up polyhedral and loaded with glycogen and lipids because the blastocyst is going deep and deep and uh, when it is disintegrated this endothelial cells then it is make a defect to you know just uh, to close this defect it is necessary for it to release the secretion nutrition so that it complete this layer again so this process when this uh, decidue uh, like uh, endothelial cells again form if it uh, under which there is the mucosal lining okay and then the cells this is known as the decidual reaction so guys um, like let's just quickly recap whatever we have seen first blastocyst attached with the selectins with the selectins it get loosely attached more powerful attachment is with the help of integrins and the sugar molecules okay then it comes to undergo apoptosis as it is going to embed it undergo apoptosis the blastocyst started producing enzyme that is digestive enzymes and the cells start undergo apoptosis dying and melting blastocysts move in and the process start at the time of seventh to ninth day so on the sixth day blastocyst attached on seventh to ninth day it comes in and on 10 to 11 days, it goes deeper. So the MCQ will make here is on 6th day, it attaches on 7 to 8th day or 7 to 9th day, it comes in on from 10th to 11th day, it goes deeper. So we see the process from 6 to 11th day where we can see the endothelial area through which we see that the trophoblast is entering. As I said, initially forms our mucus layer. Or we say mucus layer, or we say the fibrin, fibrin plug. Whenever the examiner asks by what thing this endothelial lining is, you know, covering this uh, defect, which is produced by the blastocyst, which is mainly by the fibrin plug. Okay, so this is the complete process from six to twelve day of the fertilization. Now, as these blastocysts goes in the cells, there are some significant changes that is taken by the trophoblast, that is outer cell mass layer, as well as the inner embryoblast, that is inner cell mass layer. And what are these? We'll see that we see this complete process, that is from 6 to 12 week so we have already entered into the second week and in the second week just remember there is a, a formula of two that everything becomes two in number trophoblast become two embryoblast become two the cavity becomes two Ex uh, so everything becomes two to two to two in number we see here also that they are mentioning what is trophoblast be becomes two in number once it get embedded in or it gets come in this endometrial thing now events occur from you know eighth day second week we have entered and that is on the eighth day what thing happens 
we have already know what is the embryonic flow pole and what is em uh, em embryonic flow so we see that the trophoblast basically develop from the embryonic pole and do not on no, like very few on the um, embryonic pole in early stage of the development trophoblast which is the outer cell mass is just one layer at time passes it becomes the two layer so the complete picture i don't have you can understand from this okay so we are talking about trophoblast okay now the trophoblast layer as we say it is formed by the oh, like um, outer cell mass right so this complete part is outer and this is the inner so this complete part is outer so we say that initially that the trophoblast at the early stage is one layer cell and then it becomes two what two layer one is in sure trophoblast become and one is cytu when we how we term them that this is only cytu and this is only sinchitu blast the reason is that the trophoblast which is the outer cell structures have a clear cut set we can see that there is a cell membrane and they have the uni nuclear so the trophoblastic tissue cells can be defined as the individual structure as you can see here so we say that the trophoblastic tissue in this part the every cell is very clear so we termed it as the cytotrophoblast but the outer cell must here which we are seeing here is so you know there are uh, not a complete clear cut indication or any cell so this part is known as the shinshio tropo blast so we can see ki how is shinshio tropo blast what is cytotrophoblast and these are the two divisions of the tropo now we can see now let's discuss how this sensio trophoblast basically develop so but uh, mitotic uh, like some mitotic divisions are present at the cytotrophoblast and the cells in the cytotrophoblast here you are seeing this undergoes rapid multiplication and give rise to the new cells it is proliferating and uh, like at a very fast rate so since they are giving rise to new cells the new cells move started moving outside and it start since it is starting moving outside from the cytotrophoblast they loses their membrane you know they are when they are proliferate uh, proliferating at the fastest rate they started to you know uh, losing their cell membrane in the and the protoplasm so they have do not have any uh, cell membrane membranes but they have a uh, protoplasm so the entire protoplasm of these cells which are you know going upwards get fuses together so when cytotrophoblast cells are multiplying newly formed cells are moving outside and these outwards moving cells loses the membrane and these outward moving cell um, loses their membrane and their cytoplasm or we say the protoplasm they come together and fuses when this happen then cytoplasm make a mass we can see a complete bulk of mass the nucleus which are present we do not see the membranes or any clear cut cells as we see in the cytotrophoblast the outer cell mass which is like fusing together at the fastest rate makes a network of the cytoplasm of okay or the protoplasm in which that you see that here these parts the nucleus is freely freely floating in this whereas in the cytotrophoblast it is not floating so when the uh, nucleus floats in the cytoplasm and there is no plasma membrane this part is known as the shinshio trophoblast so now we are understanding the cytoplast cytotrophoblast layer give rise to shinshio trophoblast layer these changes occur while it is undergoing the implantation everything is going under the implantation from the eighth week so we can see that that the trophoblastic changes in the cytotrophoblast give rise to the syncytotrophoblast and it the syncytotrophoblast do not have the membrane so the role of syncytotrophoblast is that it produces lots and lots of enzymes and uh, further uh, which helps in the development of 
essential chocolate milk coming to the when we talk about the you know embryonic fold right so this intro trophoblast which we are seeing this part this part completely this intro trophoblast is developing more on the embryonic fold here this is our embryonic fold and this is ab embryonic fold so centionic trophoblast is developing more on the embryonic fold whereas trophoblast is uh, like present more on the um, or like trophoblast will not when we talk about the trophoblast right it is forming more on the embryonic fold but when we come to the its division then the essential trophoblast is developed more and more on this embryonic fold so the two answer cues is covered here only itself so we are done with what happens in fifth day so on the sixth day blastocyst attached on the 7 to 9th day it goes or like just come uh, deeper and on the 8th day we find the cytophagic tissues and two layer around 9th day within the centrotrophoblast multiple cavities are formed now if we fix see sir further it develops a multiple cavity within itself since i say everything goes to in this part so further as we go around the ninth day it started making the cavities so around ninth day now we see what happens with this in the ninth day. we are done with our eighth day what we see that is a cytotrophoblast there are centrotrophoblast we say how it is made so uh, like centrotrophoblast arises from the cytotropho last this is the every for the thing which we have already done coming to the ninth day on the ninth day within the centrotrophoblast this is our centrotrophoblast okay okay this is centrotrophoblast so the cavities or the fluid filled cavities here you see this this the, the white one is started making and we term them as a lacunae or the trophoblastic lacunae sensual trophoblast now enters in the lacunar phase at the time of ninth day the lacunar structures get interconnected they further started connecting with each other okay around ninth and tenth day between like these two phases we are talking about now around ninth and tenth sorry not the twelfth Around ninth to tenth day, lacunar structure are interconnected with each other, and within the central trophoblast, there is a whole network of the lacunae or the cavity here, complete cavities formed at the end of the tenth day. Similarly, the central trophoblast will digest away capillaries, and the now we we see how the maternal blood come in contact with the fetal blood. So now the central trophoblast, which is present here, will digest away capillaries of the endometrium. The capillaries at the endometrium is so large that we termed them as the sinusoids. Okay. Now this centrotrophoblast may break some sinusoids. Like centrotrophoblast, it's not completely, you know, damaging. But where the point it is damaging, they melt away endometrium lining of sinusoid, and by chance the endometrium lining of the sinusoid, they may connect with lacunar space, and so like here, for example, here it is connected with this lacunar space, it damages. Okay. So maternal blood will come into our lacunar system. Now, what is this lacunar system? Lacunar system is basically a, a system which is a space which are made in the central trophoblast so that the maternal blood could circulate throughout that. So that is the thing which we need to understand for this part. Coming to the lacunar system. So, lacunar system is, uh, we have already discussed that it is connected with the maternal arteries or maternal vascular sinusoid. Now, if lacuna is connected with the atrial side, just imagine. 
so with the atrial side sinusoidal bloods will come at the high pressure in the lacunar system at very high pressure the blood is moving in in this part but if some other lacunae is connected with the venous side of the sinusoid blood will come in with the low pressure so we just need to remember that the blood coming from the maternal side from the lacunar system is at the high pressure or like like um th that's the only thing which we need to remember in this moving forward this uh, circulation this complete circulation it forms the you know uh, a complete circulation that is utero placental circulation that means that the uterine blood is going in a structure which will be going to be of future placenta from the baby so here we can easily see we are done with that okay so we can see what as i say in the previous slide that there is a fibrin plug here which finally after the embedition is help in the closure of this defect and we have done with utero placental circulation which is basically for the connection between the placenta and the baby when this utero placental circulation occur it is on the 11 to 12 here the uh, this uh, utero placental circulation is basically c now around 13 day the blastocyst if the blastocyst is suppose not plugged in the 13th day okay so around 13th day if it is not plugged there is the high flow in the lacunar system and some blood you know if it is not plugged properly so some blood might go outside if some blood go outside it happens in some females that uh, around 13 day day of the gestation due to this improper implantation process there is the utero placental circulation occur through the lacunar space and there will be not like it is not present in all females but there is this chances to happen the blood started going in the uterine cavity and if the blood started going in the uterine cavity some females think that it is the menstrual blood and it is not a bad basically about its pregnancy time and then the it is not like you know easy for them to diagnose their pregnancy so now we are moving forward on our 14th day 13 to 14th grade time the cytotrophoblast which we are see okay the cytotrophoblast which are uh, you know which is present cytotrophoblast which is present inside so some uh, like it is having a columnar cells with it and this cytotrophoblast the uh, there is a rise of this primary villi from itself so on the 14 day we see the primary villi Now we have totally done with our entire cytotrophoblastic events, and at the cytotrophoblastic events, we see that it is, uh, you know, trophoblastic events where we say it forms a uh, two layer sinusoidal trophoblast and a cytotrophoblast. Now we are moving forward to the what happens in the embryonic event. We see how this epiblast and hypoblast is formed over here. So cells of the embryoblast, embryoblast means the cells on the in a cell mass that is facing towards the cystic cavity okay the cells which like come um, these cells which is facing towards the our uh, cavity these cells from embryoblast you know they are basically a cuboidal in shape and this layer is facing towards the cavity these cells are facing basically towards our blastocyst cavity so these are known as the hypoblast the other cells above is somewhat a columnar in shape and some cavities develop here here 
and they become and this cavity is also becomes the fluid filled cavity and eventually those fluid filled cavities connect with each other and cells are pressed towards each other here we see cells of uh, coming like you know this proliferating cells and they make uh, fluid is present here also so they make a complete layer of cells and a cavity so some cells are pressed upwards and some on the downwards and leave one layer of the cells, which is the columnar in the cells. These columnar cells facing newly developed cavity that is amniotic cavity, where we have a cuboidal cells facing to the hypoblast or facing above the, this hypoblastic layer. It is known as the epiblast. In this way, the cuboidal cell is known as the apoblast and the epiblast is having a columnar cells. Above the columnar cells for the epiblast, we have newly developed cavity that is amniotic cavity. And here we have our previous cavity that is the blastocyst. So um, we see that uh, in the air today, as I've already said, everything becomes true. So the cavity which is from this amniotic cavity, and we have already our blastocyst cavity with our cells. Okay, so there are two types of cells also formed. One is apiblast, and one is amniblast, like newly formed cells. When we talk about, so when we concern with the cavities, cavity uh, cells, one is amniotic blast cell, and one is apiblastic cells. Hypoblast now uh, you know produce some cells down from here some cells are moving downwards and they create a newly cavity and which is known as the primary oxide since see here carefully that this is our uh, hypoblast it started proliferating downwards and they make a primary oxide this epiblast and hypoblast the epiblast and hypoblast together make the bilaminar. So in the second week of development, the main important thing is there is the bilaminar formation, there is a formation of amniotic cavity, there is the formation of primary or sac. So this is the main thing which we need to remember. Now the cells made up of the hypoblast, okay? All the cells which is made up of hypoblast below the bilaminar disc here, below the bilaminar disc, they started secreting connective tissue and the connective tissue which they are secreting start depositing between the yolk sac and cytotrophoblast. This connective tissue layer keep on secreting and pushing. Like they are keep on secreting, keep on secreting and pushing and pushing away such that it started moving upwards. You see that these like proliferating and it is starting moving somewhat at this end. The upward side it is starting moving on the upper ends. Between them, so this is cytotrophoblast and the amniotic fluid. So, you know, since here it's the blue cells are the cytotrophoblast and this is our amniotic fluid and these uh, hypoblast cells starting moving upwards and uh, you know pushing this entire thing into the upward portion so now we develop another you know the, uh, these connective tissue now it is known as extra meso extra embryonic mesoderm so now we are done with the formation. Like here it is very micro. We see here, it is start moving upwards. This is our cytotrophoblast. These, for these, these, this is our amniotic part. And we see that the hypoplastic layers start proliferating at the fastest layer. And it makes ultimately with the extra embryonic mesoderm. The connective tissue layer keep on secreting and pushing as we say a way such that it started moving upward. This entire thing, you know, here you see where it is starting moving upwards and it forms the extra embryonic mesoderm. So here, at the, around 12 weeks, there is the formation of extra embryonic mesoderm. Meanwhile, the cavity starts developing in the extra embryonic mesoderm. So we see that once it is moving upward, it started creating this cavity. These cavity, again, 
the same procedure goes on fuses and leave a layer of extra embryonic mesoderm inner side and the outer side mesoderm so now the inner side and the side of the extra embryonic mesoderm towards extra embryonic mesoderm towards a cytotrophoblast this cavity is termed as extra embryonic coelomic cavity this cavity is also extended throughout the upper part of the bilaminar like bilaminar disc it is you know extra coelomic cavity it goes on upwards and upwards and so it is termed as embryonic cavity also so when we talk about the cavity upper or when we talk about the cavity upper upper and the lower part of the bilaminar germinal layer we together call it as the extra embryonic coelomic cavity this part which is present up with like bilaminar germ cells it is known as extra embryonic coelomic cavity so now when we see that uh, what else what more uh, you know division can occur at the time of 13th day we see when the cells of the hypoblast these green color cells at this time another make a secondary oxide started make a cavity here we see primary oxide which we termed as the extracellular cavity then we see that again these cells proliferate proliferate and they form the secondary oxide and some pieces of the you know of primary oxide are left over in this so some pieces suppose this is the pieces of primary oxide left over it will break away and they fall in the cavity known as extracellular cavity so in the extra coelomic cavity they you know basically uh, fold in this primary oxac uh, pieces get uh, you know broken and put jump into this cavity extra embryonic uh, mesoderm like that is the inner cell is now termed as extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm here there is the extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm and the extra embryonic mesoderm that is our outer layer like see we have one inner layer we have one outer layer so the inner layer which we are talking about is known as extra embryonic or like splanchnic mesoderm inner layer and the outer layer is known as extra embryonic somatic mesoderm this is extra embryonic somatic mesoderm and this one is extra embryonic and this part this formed is a secondary or we say chorionic cavity so the cavity between extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm here you can see easily the here you can see the sandwich this is our extra embryonic coelomic cavity one sandwich the or like one layer then we have an extra embryonic somatic mesoderm and between these we have a cavity and this is known as the chorionic cavity is developed so the chorionic cavity comes from extra embryonic mesoderm okay so just remember this thing from where the chorionic cavity is developed so now we call it as a chorionic cavity the outer layer of extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm along with the cytotrophoblast and the centrotrophoblast these things all layer together is referred to as a chorionic plate so what are the things present in the chorionic plate might come in the mcq that is extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm cytotrophoblast and the centrotrophoblast centrotrophoblast this it all makes our chorionic cavity or the chorionic plate not cavity it's a plate now just to recap everything once what are the changes that take place at the end of this first when we talk about uh, 
what things happen in the second week. First, we form the bilaminar, bilaminar, for bilaminar germ layer. Second, we say we form the amniotic cavity. Then there is the formation of yolk sac, primary yolk sac, and the secondary yolk sac. First, let's do one thing at the end of the second week. What things we can see? First, we have the bilaminar germ layer. You may write it. It is the MCQ point of view. There is the bilaminar germ layer formation. There is the amniotic cavity formation. That is the yolk or uh, secondary yolk sac. Then we have the three structure that got connected with a connecting stalk and the future it develop into the umbilical cord. Through the umbilical stick, the amniotic cavity, the yolk sac and the germinal layer whole structure is connected when we see in you know in the upcoming lecture in the third week we see how this umbilical cord is drawn so basically uh, in the end of the third or second week which we need to remember that the amniotic cavity yolk sac and this the bilaminal germ layer is essential for the formation of our umbilical cord so let's recap everything what is the summary of this like what are the two things which we see coming to the cytoblast. What is the cytoblast? We already see that the cytoblast is divided into two cells. What are the names of the cytoblast which are divided into two, two, uh, like two parts? That is our cytotrophoblast and syncytotrophoblast. Or we say when we talk about the trophoblast, trophoblast is the outer cell mass. It, converted into syncytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast. When we come to the cavity, we make amniotic cavity and we make our this cavity that is chorionic cavity. When we come to the embryoblast, okay, so embryoblast is our inner cell mass. It makes our epiblast and hypoblast and extra embryonic mesoderm. When we talk about it, we say there is an extra embryonic splattering mesoderm and extra embryonic somatic mesoderm. So this is the complete our uh, development of uh, taking place in the second week. And this is the embryonic events which we have done. So now it's a time to just recap whatever we have done. I have put it in the tabular form. First, we see what is the fertilization. The site of fertilization is ampulla, which we have already know, and it has come at many times in our UG exam also. Then fertilization has three phases. First is sperm penetrate the corona radiata. Second is sperm binding occurs through the interaction of sperm glycotransferase and zona pellucida sperm binding protein 3. These already we have studied, so I have not explained you in our previous slide also. Sperm binding triggers acrosomal reaction, result in release of acrosomal enzyme. What are the acrosomal enzyme? It is acrosin and high allurinodase. This come in the MCQ penetration of zona pellucida. They require acrosomal reaction. Then sperms contact with the cell membrane triggers secondary use site. It is also known as footed also, triggers cortical reaction. That is block polyspermin. That is it is a cortical reaction that is to block the entry of the, like just make a correction in the previous side, I'll see you that when the, uh, you know, sperms come, that process is known as the polysperm. It is not a polyspermy, like uh, the blockage is known as the cortical reaction and the sperms coming is known as the polysperm. Coming to the uh, phase three, that is the fusion of sperm and the oocyte membrane, male and female pronuclear fuses, we have seen in the 24 hours. And the zygote is a unicellular cell and it is very important to so do not forget this MCQ. The sex of the embryo is determined at the time of fertilization. We already see the up to uh, eight cell stages, the cells are totipotent and up to after eight, it is the pluripotent. So, these are something which we need to, you know, um, just a revised one. So uh, what are the totipotent cell? It is the, um, you know, generate, it is a process of generation of new cells, new organisms from the cell. Okay. And when we talk about uh, uh, the pluripotent, that is the basically our stem cells that have a capacity. So 
for self renew so these are the things we have already seen coming to the cleavage two cell stage the cleavage is a mitotic division start in the zygote two cell stage comes in 30 hours comes in mcq four cell stage 45 hours modula is 16 cell stage three days after fertilization in the time of modula this it is surrounded by zona pellucida and it is arranged into inner cell mass in the center we have discussed and the outer cell mass at the periphery now coming to the advanced modular stage at the 32 cell fourth day after fertilization blastocyst form on fourth day after fertilization we have already seen four to fifth day involves secretion of fluid within morula that forms blastocyst cavity and so it is known as blastocyst contain inner cell mass we say embryoblast outer cell mass trophoblast we uh, pole towards embryoblast is embryonic pole and opposite is it is not embryonic pole it is actually like it is ab so make it correction it is ab embryonic pole and not the embryonic pole just write it a b before it now outer cell mass form coverings and placenta and the inner cell mass make the are a complete embryo proper on fourth day after blastocyst formation zona pellucida start disappearing on fifth day blastocyst hatched out we see in that process and now implantation occur on the sixth day and it is attached to the endometrium when we summarize the table below events in the form of the tabular form over two cell stage on the first or like after fertilization fertilization is on first day so if fertilization occur so two cell stage occurs on the second day fertilization on the first day formation of four cells on the second day eight cell on the like up to eight cell or we say 18 or here put it as a 16 that will be more convenient for you so make it 16 up to third day early morula start at third day that is 16 cell stage and the blastocyst on the 15 to 16 cell stage enters into the uterine cavity now coming to the implantation it begins in 6 to 7th uh, day. It ends at that 11 to 12. We see how every complete process doctor, then the site is already endometrium. Steps, blastocyst is attached to endometrium at the embryonic pole, MCQ. Trophoblast cells on embryonic pole begins to erode epithelium. We say it releases some nutrient enzymes and it undergoes apoptosis after complete embedding of the penetration defect is or closed by fibrin clot with the uh, what things are released by the cells that is some nutrition and uh, that is fibrin plug or clot you can say both coming to the second week of development we see that is the implantation that is come uh, like completion of the implantation is done we see the trophoblast is formed and the embryoblast trophoblast is our outer cell mass and embryoblast are inner cell mass Come, moving forward on the eighth day, what things we see that the blast, uh, blastocyst was partially embedded in the endometrium, inner cell mass, which is embryoblast. Then we, you know, in the from eighth week, we see what changes occurs in the trophoblast. What see how the cavities is formed at the eighth week. Must have like in um, from eight to twelve, I have you know divided what happens in inner cell mass, what is trophoblast, and what happens in the cavity. So we just remember that what day, what cavity is formed. So inner cell mass, embryoblast, cells organize and form bilaminar jomedis that we say that it has a happy blast and the hypoblast. So the columnar cells and the so we have the polygonal cells, happy blast and the hypoblast, which we see. Then we see the trophoblast, trophoblast mix two, that is central trophoblast, that is outer, in other cytotrophoblast, and the cavity, amniotic cavity starts to be from MCQ again. Small flaps forms begins to between endothelial dermal cells and the trophoblast, flaps joins, amniotic fluid, while the flow formed by the endodermal cell. So it might come in the anterior, but also. Coming to the ninth and the tenth day, here you can see easily in, at the time of implantation, blastocyst has become larger and implantation penetration defect closed by fibrin clot like this started coming to the inner cell mass inner cell masses are embryoblast so just remember everything in the embryoblast occurs at the eighth day so eighth day is actually important for the point of view of the embryoblast in the trophoblast whole trophoblast differentiate into sensual trophoblast and cytotrophoblast the lacunae appears 
in the sensu trophoblast mcq again here and done for now we talking about the cavities amniotic cavity become larger uh, larger first yolk or uh, now we see there is the first yolk sac started to form and ventral side of the embryonic sac like first yolk cavity starts forming okay cells from endodermal cells grow down to the lining inner surface cytotrophoblast forming are this exocelomic cavity or exocelomic layer or we say the user's membrane first yolk sac replaces the cavity of the blastocyst its roof is formed by the endodermal cells and the remaining is we see that the remaining is formed by the viewers membrane and the endodermal cells so this is just a review what we have already seen implantation from 11 to 12 day blastocyst is completely embedded till the 12th day as we have already seen endometrial lining grow to cover penetration defect like penetration defect is completely closed embryoblast similar to the 8th day as i said only on the 8th day it is beneficial trophoblast into trophoblast lacuna like are formed and lacuna like started communicating with each other cytotrophoblast formation of extra embryonic mesoderm we see cells of the inner cells of the cytotrophoblast form a loose and it is like loose tissue and it is known as extra embryonic mesoderm trophoblast is called like trophoblast then started forming as the chorion blastocyst is for as chorionic vessels then we have extra celomic cavity then extra celomic cavity then differentiated into extra celomic like somatopleuric cavity and splenomeuric cavity so these are the things which we need to remember and on the 13th day of the implantation penetration defect as we saw at the end of the 12 days completely closed at the epithelium and the mucus layer no changes in the epiblast like you know penetration defect is not but it's like started completing almost so in the trophoblast first chorionic villi has started Up here, this is known as uh, the part of the cytotrophoblast or the embryonic pole, which produces the first chorionic villi, which is surrounded by the trophoblastic lacuna. And when we talk about the cavity, so there is the amniotic cavity is similar, and formation of the secondary yolk sac started at the day thirteen. So this is come in the MCQ and most important part. Coming to the summary of this point. We say there is the two layers of the cell that is epiblast and hypoblast. We say we have the two, you know, membranes which we call it amnion on the chorion. We say two cavities, primary yolk sac and the secondary yolk sac. Or we say two cavities, amniotic cavity and the chorion cavity here. Then we have the extra mes embryonic mesoderm that is somatopleuric and the splenomeuric. So. This is the things which we need to learn by heart. And when we talk about the trophoblast, it is the, like cytotrophoblast can be cytotrophoblast and the sensu trophoblast. So here you can add that point also. So once the baby is growing, like just like baby starting developing, sensu trophoblast become larger because of the amount of S. CG we say that a CG hormone is released at the time of the pregnancy, which stimulates our corpus luteum. Which or uh, once it is stimulated by the corpus luteum, the function of corpus luteum is to produce more progesterone. So progesterone withdraw is like you know, or um, or progesterone basically you know maintain the pregnancy. So hormones responsible for maintaining the pregnancy is the progesterone. So this is the entire thing which we need to understand in the development up to second week. And the main thing is just study by heart the layers which is formed, the cavity which is formed, the time when the cavity is formed, the names of the cavity, the layers, or the membranes, and everything. So whatever I have put in the slide, it is very important from the exam point of view. Just remember, and you will just pass it with a very good mark. So that's all. From my side on this topic, if you like the content of our video, do like, do comment your reviews, do share as much as you can, and please subscribe the channel so you get the notification whenever I put any new video. So I hope it will be beneficial for you, and I love 
uh, if you send me your review so that I can know if like you are getting what I'm or like it's uh, teaching in this lecture. So just do put your reviews in the comment section and just let me know how much beneficial is this video for you. We'll meet in the next lecture with the second part of it. So till then just study well and just memorize whatever the content is I uh, have provided in this lecture that is sufficient for you. So that's for today. Let's stop or just terminate this lecture here only. So bye.